Hey there, welcome back to AD Tutoring. So in this video, what we're gonna be doing is exploring one-sided limits algebraically. So there's always a general guideline we can follow, and here's what I have. If we're computing a limit as x approaches a minus or x approaches a plus, one-sided limit, doesn't matter which side, and we know that our function is continuous at a, then the limit as x approaches a plus or minus, doesn't matter what side, the limit is equal to the function evaluated at a. And the reasoning for this should make a lot of sense because if the function is continuous, that means that there aren't gonna be any jump discontinuities, no holes, no nothing, nothing like that, you know? The function is flowy and we know that it will be continuous, it will have a value. And because we know that the graph won't jump or it won't discontinue, then we know that, okay, cool, the limit as x approaches a minus or plus is equal to f at a. Now, here's where we need to get a little more technical, because if it's not continuous, we need to ask ourselves, well, is there a way to simplify the function? You know, is it a removable discontinuity? Or, um, you know, can we rewrite it in terms of it being an absolute value function? Because absolute value functions, those are piecewise functions. And with piecewise functions, those are very nice in terms of one-sided limits. And so, yeah, you know, and I'll go over examples of both of those, what I mean there. And so, you know, if we can't do any of these, if it's not continuous and we can't rewrite it, we can't simplify or anything, then we'll just have to use our knowledge of numbers, pretty much. That's all it is. So let's go ahead and begin with an example. And this example is for a continuous function. So suppose we were computing the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of 2x plus 3. Now, I hope we know by now that 2x plus 3 is completely continuous, completely continuous. And so the limit as x approaches 4 from the left, well, there's continuity at 4, so we would just plug in 4. And so that would be 2 times 4 plus 3, which is equal to 8 plus 3, and that's 11. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of 2x plus 3. Clearly, we see that there's continuity at x equals 4. Clearly, all of these values exist. And so therefore, if we're going approaching from the left, we'll, st we'll still get 11, no matter what. And that's what I mean. Let's go ahead and take a look at another example. Suppose we were asked to compute the limit as x approaches 2, but from the right this time, and we're computing the limit of x squared minus 4 all over x minus 2. Now, if we were asking ourselves about continuity at x equals 2, this is a rational function. With rational functions, just check the denominator. If we plug in 2, we see that we'll receive 0 in that denominator. And so, no, there is not continuity at x equals a or x equals 2. So, because there's no continuity, we got to ask ourselves, can we simplify? Is there an absolute value? Well, in this particular example, we can actually rewrite it. This, we can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 2 plus. Notice in the numerator, this is a difference of squares. And so therefore, we can rewrite this as x plus 2 times x minus 2, all over x minus 2. Denominator stays the same. All I did was rewrite the numerator. So in all, we notice that we can definitely simplify the x minus 2s from the numerator and the denominator. So because of that, we're left with the limit as x approaches 2 plus of x plus 2. And so after simplifying, we see that, yeah, x plus 2, that's a straight line as well. That's continuous on its own. And so, yeah, we can go ahead and plug in the limit directly using direct substitution. Doing so, we'll receive 2 plus 2, which is equal to 4. And that's the limit. No big deal. If we can simplify, that's completely legal with math terms, because all we're doing is just removing the removable discontinuity. And that's it. Then we can go ahead and use direct substitution, and we're all set. Let's take a look at this next example. This one's gonna be uh, a non-continuous function that can be rewritten as a piecewise function. So suppose we had the limit as x approaches one from the left of the following rational function. Let's say we're looking at the absolute value of x minus one all over x minus one. Now, if you think that we can just go ahead and just cross these out like so, be afraid. That is not what we can do. However, here's what we notice. At x equals 1, if we were to plug it in, we would not have continuity because the denominator would be 0. 
So what we need to do is let's go ahead and explore how we can rewrite this because all absolute value functions, every single one of them is a piecewise function. So here's what I mean. If we're taking a look at X minus one and I'm gonna change colors over here, I'm gonna use uh, greenish. So the absolute value of X minus one, this it can be rewritten as a piecewise function and you can use the graph to confirm this. This can be rewritten as negative x minus 1 for values x less than 1. It can also be rewritten as x minus 1 for values greater than 1. And what is it at x equals 1? Well, if we had x equals 1, that's going to be 0 because 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 when x equals 1. And there we go. So we have officially rewritten this as a piecewise function. Now I'm going to explain why. So take a look at the graph of the absolute value of x minus 1. Taking a look, we see that it is the actual graph of x minus 1 for x is greater than 1. And remember, what the absolute value function does is take any negative value and make it positive. So looking at this graph, if we were to draw just x minus 1, anywhere so beginning at x equals one and then going to all values prior so from negative infinity to positive one we see that all of those values would have been negative but then looking at the absolute value of x minus one those values become positive positive. and so that's why with the absolute value symbol since these values all the values less than one would have been negative anyway all i got to do is tack on a negative in front and boom all of those values become positive and since that function equals zero for both the first and the third, I'm just going to go ahead and say zero when x is equal to one. And there we go. And since we're looking at the one-sided limit, this is the cool thing now. Since we're taking a one-sided limit as x approaches one from the left, we only need to concern ourselves with the left side of one then, which is right here. This is all we got to concern ourselves with. So essentially what we can do then is rewrite the entire limit. We can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of negative x minus 1 all over x minus 1. And to be quite fair with you, you don't even need to include the minus in this particular situation because we have rewritten the numerator as its one-sided uh, part of the function right here. And x minus 1 is continuous on its own anyway. So in essence, we could say as x approaches 1 minus or just x approaches 1. Either way is completely fine. Either way is fine. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it as minus. So we should immediately notice that we could go ahead and now simplify x minus 1 in the numerator and denominator, leaving us with the limit as x approaches 1 minus of negative 1. And since there's no variable to take the limit of, well, that'll just be negative 1 just like that. Let's go ahead and erase this just so we have a lot more space. But this should definitely make sense because upon looking at the graph, yeah, we can definitely see that, hey, whoa, we have the limit as x approaches one from the left and we were able to convert this. And if we look at the graph directly, we would see that, yo, this is negative one all the way up until x equals one. And then at x equals one, there's a jump discontinuity. And then it's another horizontal line, one, all the way through. And so I hope that makes sense. It really should. And so lastly, let's go ahead and take a look at an example that just requires our knowledge of numbers. So taking a look at, let's go ahead and say we're taking the limit as x approaches 5 from the right. And we are doing 7x over, let's say, x minus 5. Now, this function is definitely not continuous at x equals 5 because that would cause a discontinuity at the for the denominator because it'll be 0. Another thing we can notice is that we can't simplify anything here. There's nothing to simplify. And on top of that, this isn't an absolute value function. And so we're forced to use our knowledge of numbers here. And don't be afraid. Let me guide you. So here in this situation, what we want to notice is that we want to go ahead and get closer and closer to 5 from the right side. And here's what would happen. This is equivalent to if we were to plug in you know, a value that's really, 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 really close to 5 from the right. We would have in the numerator 7x, so 7 times something that's really, really, really close to 5 from the right. And here in the numerator, it doesn't really matter because that'll just be 35 approximately. In the denominator, though, this is where it matters. Because if we were looking at a value very close to 5 from the right, we're taking a look at something like this. 
like 5.0000, so an infinite amount of zeros, and then a one at the end. So this is essentially me breaking mathematical laws. This is just how I'm expressing getting close to really, uh, really, really close to five. So we have 5.000, maybe like a million, a billion, jillion, an infinite amount of zeros, and then a one afterwards. Notice, noting that we have a very, very close number to five from the right. Then we subtract five. So in essence, what this would give us is this would be approximately 35 in the numerator. In the denominator though, we have, okay, so a number that's just over five minus five is gonna be a number that's actually just over zero. So it'll be like 0, 0.0 repeating one. So it'll be just very, 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 very close to zero. And this is just me explaining it the best way I can using visuals, okay guys? This may not be the best way to represent this in the classroom unless your teacher gives you special permission. But again, this is not mathematically legal the way I'm representing it. But nonetheless, we have a constant number divided by a very, very infinitely small positive number. Using our knowledge of numbers, if we have a constant divided by a very small positive number, we will receive a very large positive number, positive infinity. And there we go. That's what this limit would be. And so if I lost you for a second, just remember, take your calculator out. Take 35, divide it by 0 0.1. Then take 35 and divide it by 0 0.01. Then 0 0.001 and keep going and going and going. And notice the trend. You're going to notice that that number is going to get very, very, very large. And so that's what I mean by using knowledge of numbers. You can skip that process on the calculator and just know how these rules work. And so looking at the graph of 7x over x minus 5, as we look for x is approaching 5 from the right, well, hey, it looks like I'm right. And you are right too. The limit is positive infinity. And there we go. And so to repeat what I said earlier, you can go ahead and write these notes down now or go ahead and just skip back in the video. You can go ahead and just write those notes when I presented them right in the beginning. Like I said, if we have a continuous function, if the function is continuous at the value that we're taking the limit of, it doesn't matter if it's one-sided or two-sided. If the function is continuous at that value, then the limit is just the function evaluated at that value. Now, if the function isn't continuous, like we saw with our second and third example, if it's not continuous at the limit, well, hey, what we're going to have to do is see if we can simplify like we did here or see if we can convert any absolute value functions into a piecewise and then rewrite the limit, which is what we did here. In our last example, we couldn't do either. We, it wasn't continuous at uh, five and there was nothing we could do. And so all I did, just use your knowledge of numbers and you're good. So that's what I mean. Um, and then if it's involving trig, just make sure you look out for any special trig limits like we did in the last video. But as long as you pay attention to these and just have a sound understanding of knowledge of numbers, you'll be completely fine. So until next time, keep watching, practicing, and mastering, and then go ahead and check out the next video on limits to infinity of rational functions. Stay tuned.